Welcome to the virtual Greater Boston Church of Spiritualism on this wonderfully fall Sunday or whenever you are choosing to view this video. Please join me in our opening prayer. Infinite Spirit, beloved God, we open our hearts and minds to your presence, to your light, and to your love. We ask blessings upon all of us who have gathered here today in our own sacred spaces. We wish to feel your love and to ignite our lights so that we may shine them in the world and make our world a better place. We ask today that you bring to us our loved ones so that we may truly know that life and love continues into eternity, that we are all part of each other, all a part of you. We give thanks for this knowledge as we say, Amen. And now a responsive reading. Um, which I will read from our hymnal on spiritualism. Spiritualism is a golden key in the hand of God, an open door to greater things, a guiding light in the dead of night, and it comes on love's own wings. It's a message of love from those above whose hearts are as pure as gold, a song of peace that stills all grief, the beauty of truth untold. It's a ray of light stealing all your life, keeping out all darkness and sin, wrapping you tight in a garment of white, a new life for you to begin. It's a beautiful truth, pure and sweet, God's greatest gift to man, the road that leads to the things you need. So use it as much as you can. It's a flower designed by the hand of God and it grows in the garden above. Its petals are blue with many a hue, and each one spells infinite love. It's a firm foundation under your feet and a well-paved road to truth, a beacon light set out at night to guide our wayward youth. It's a magnetic cord that binds your soul to the angels hovering near, and the voice of God telling you, your loved ones are always here. It's a soothing balm to your tired nerves and food for each hungry soul. Rest and peace at the end of the road and success when you reach the goal. A sweet peace steals away your soul when you hold it in loving embrace. And it paints a picture on memory that mortal hands can ne'er erase. The music so sweet can't define the peace that it brings to me. And I plead with love to those above to bring unto me the key. A lovely poem written by Elizabeth Seeger. And now if you would join me in our healing prayer, which will appear on the screen. I ask the great unseen healing force to remove all obstruction from my mind and body and to restore me to perfect health. I ask this in all sincerity and honesty, and I will do my part. I ask this great unseen healing force to help both present and absent ones who are in need of help, and to restore them to perfect health. I put my trust in the love and the power of God. And now it's time for our healing meditation, a time where we can relax, let go of the stress and strain that we may have picked up over the week and just be present with our spirit selves. Be present with that divine essence that is within us and around us. So I ask you to just get comfortable in your space. Close your eyes and take a nice deep breath and allow that breath to relax you, to soothe you and to calm you. Breathing in and breathing out, allow yourself to be present in this sacred moment of now, letting go of the past, letting go of the future and just allow your attention to move with your breath as it moves through your body imagine a beautiful light flowing with that breath relaxing soothing and calming and every breath you take in brings more and more life more and more peace and as you breathe out release Release the stress, the dis-ease, the discomfort that you may have held on to and allow your body to be at ease. Allow this healing light to travel through every muscle and bone, every nerve and joint, every system and every organ, bringing to your body exactly what it needs 
to be strong and to thrive. Feel that divine healing life flowing in with that breath, restoring and renewing you, bringing you back into a place of harmony within. And as your body relaxes, feel that light gently move through your mind, quieting that busy mind, helping you to release any negative thoughts, any fearful thoughts, any less than thoughts or worried thoughts. And just imagine a beautiful, peaceful river flowing through your mind, carrying away your thoughts so that you may relax, so that you may open to the inspiration and the wisdom that flows to you from the highest side of life. Allow your mind to open and expand as you lift into that higher mind, that higher part of you that knows itself as one with God, that knows itself as one with all there is. And allow your mind to continue to expand and take in this light so that you are filled with positivity, with loving thoughts that will guide your way. As your mind expands and your body relaxes, allow that light to gently flow over your emotional body as well, clearing away the pains and hurts of yesterday, washing away the angers and resentments we may have held on to, and allow any negative emotion that has held you back from loving to be washed away by this pure, unconditional love of God that is all around you. Allow yourself to be present within that presence of God. Feel it filling your heart and opening and expanding your heart so that you may know who you truly are. Just feel and imagine this light all around you, filling that auric field, expanding you so that you may become aware of who you really are as a magnificent spirit of God made from love and energy. And as you sit within your own fields of light, feel a beautiful light drawing you up higher and higher above the physical plane, moving you into a beautiful land of light where all is peaceful, all is calm, where the light of God emanates from everything, every flower, every tree, every leaf and every bush. And just feel the presence of God existing in the air you breathe, in everything that is around you. And imagine yourself now moving through a beautiful orchard. See rows and rows of beautiful trees all filled to abundance with magnificent fruit, every kind you ever could imagine. As you move through these rows and rows of trees, notice that every tree is emanating something wonderful. There is a tree of beauty, a tree of love, a tree of peace, a tree of wisdom, a tree of understanding, a tree of compassion, a tree of patience, and a tree of kindness. Every one of the trees in this orchard are emanating something wonderful that lives within you. For this orchard is the orchard of your soul. And every attribute you possess is there on all of these wonderful trees. And you can see that there is an angel with every tree, whispering, supporting, and helping every one of these wonderful attributes to grow until they are ready to be brought into the world. Feel all these ripened fruit moving into your heart and soul so that you may live these wonderful attributes, so that you may carry that love and that wisdom, that peace, that understanding, that patience into every moment and every day of your life. As you stand in this beautiful orchard, feel the rays of God's love shining down upon you and bringing to you everything you need to be nurtured so that you may grow and deliver the magnificence of your own soul to the world. Feel your heart expanding and opening in this healing light 
and feel this light that fills you radiating out through you into your space, into your homes. Send this light and this healing love to all the people in your life. Send it out to all those who are in transition, to all those who are suffering. We send it out to all those who are lost in hatred and fear. And we see this light traveling through our world, flowing to every heart, every mind, every spirit, bringing us all into harmony within ourselves and with each other. Let us together hold the vision of our world filled with life, our entire planet emanating light into the universe, and know that this light is bringing love, is bringing healing to all. Take a moment to take this light into your heart, into your mind, into your spirit so that you may carry this healing light wherever you go and allow, allow it to flow through you into the world around you simply by your presence, simply by you holding this light of God, this healing power within you. You can emanate it and share it and make a difference wherever you are. Take a nice deep breath and allow yourself to know that you have everything you need within you, that you are whole, complete, and perfect as you are, that you are supported always, and that the strength, the love, and the power of God is never apart from you. Take another nice deep breath and gently feel yourself coming back into the room, feeling the seat beneath you and the clothes upon your body. Take another nice deep breath. And as you open your eyes, smile. And share that light and that love that you have felt. Share those wonderful attributes that you have within you with everyone you encounter. For you are a magnificent expression of God on earth and you have everything you need within you to be that every day. And now if you join me in our Declaration of Principles, uh, they will appear on the screen before you, if you'd read them with me. We believe in infinite spirit and that God is infinite spirit. We believe that the phenomena of nature, both physical and spiritual, are the expression of infinite spirit. We affirm that a correct understanding of such expression and living in accordance therewith constitute true religion. We affirm that the existence and personal identity of an individual continue after the change called death. We affirm that communication with the so-called dead is a fact scientifically proven by the phenomena of spiritualism. We believe that the highest morality is contained in the golden rule, whatsoever ye would that others should do unto you, do ye also unto them. We affirm the moral responsibility of the individual and that they make their own happiness or unhappiness as they obey nature's physical and spiritual laws. We affirm that the doorway to reformation is never closed against any human soul here or hereafter. And we affirm the precepts of prophecy and healing contained in the Bible are divine attributes proven through mediumship. So today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the religion of spiritualism. Uh, a few years back, Spirit said to me, spiritualism is like a great feast. It has so many aspects of it that help us to live our lives in the best possible way. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about that. I believe that the real meat or the main course in our feast of spiritualism is spiritual development the development of each individual as we live our lives. Because spiritualism is a philosophy, not just a religion, not just a science, but a philosophy in the way we live our lives. How we see things, how we look at life, how we experience everything, how we live with conscious awareness, 
and how we remember who we really are. We are all parts of the divine. We know that. We are all expressions of God. But the hard part is remembering that each and every day. We look in the mirror and we see these physical faces. But that's really not who we are. We are spiritual beings. We are parts of divine. We are sparks of God here to express that on earth. So some of the things and some of the ways that spiritualism helps us is through our spiritual practices. We all need spiritual practices to help us. And connecting to the divine through prayer, through intention and affirmation, help us to grow and help us to remember who we are each and every day. We start our day connecting to the divine like we did in our meditation. We start our day choosing to be who we really are. And hopefully we get to carry that through. Another spiritual practice that really helps is meditation and also contemplation. Meditation and contemplation are wonderful tools that we have available to us all the time. And I know we talk a lot about meditation, but contemplation is something really important. And some of the ways we use contemplation is open up a book and read one passage in a book. Maybe it's an inspirational book or maybe it's a magazine. It's amazing where you can find inspiration. Just try look at your bookshelf or your coffee table and see what's lying there and open to any page and see what jumps out at you. As I was getting ready to prepare this service, I opened a book that was on my shelf and it's interesting, I'll read exactly what it, the passage said. Everyone must walk his own path, but everyone can be helped by their companions. When you sit in contemplation and meditation, although you, although you may prefer to be alone, indeed you are always alone in your own inner sanctuary, you cannot dwell in splendid isolation apart from your brethren. Through meditation and contemplation of God, you find unity with all of God's creatures. And isn't that what we're here to learn? To live in unity and in harmony with all of God's creatures, with each other. That's one of the biggest lessons that we're learning through this time on this planet. To work in harmony and in unity with each other and remember we're all connected. Another way to use contemplation in your daily life is pull a card. I know we, most of us have angel cards or meditation cards or inspirational cards. It could be a tarot card. Just pull a card. There are many cards that just have one single word on them. Or you can make your own and just write all of the positive things you want to contemplate throughout your life. And every day pick one card. And the funny one that I picked today is uh, ideas and inspirations. Those two really went together with the sermon, didn't they? And the picture on the con was an angel whispering into someone's ear. And I thought, how appropriate, because I always ask my angels for help. And so can you. Angels are everywhere, and they love to help us. They love to be asked. So you need to ask your angels. They will help you in everything. I can't tell you any, any time I've gone through anything without asking my angels to help me, and they always are there. Right from parking spaces to uh, anything you can imagine, to helping me in the car <laughs> and not hit somebody who's in my way, hitting those brakes harder than they actually can be hit. So the angels are always there, but we have to remember to ask them. And they're very much in our lives. And you, you need to know that you're never alone in all that you do. And as you move into a path of spiritual development, as you use spiritual practices, you begin to understand that you're never alone, that help is always there, guidance is always there. Another spiritual practice that is so important for us to practice is self-love, loving yourself. That is one of the most important things we can do. You know, I once read or heard somewhere a statement that said, wherever you go, there you are. You just can't get away from yourself. So you might as well make the best of it and learn to love yourself. 
because even when you die, you'll still be there. There's no getting away from you. So take time and think about things you can do to promote self-love in your life, to help you make the best choices that are really for your highest good. That's the way of loving yourself. And when we love ourselves, well, we love everybody else too. Two other things that are really important in our support of our spiritual development are the principles, the principles that we just read and the natural laws. And the principles and natural laws go hand in hand. And I often talk about the law of cause and effect and the golden rule. Whatever we put out comes back to us. We decide how we're going to live our lives. But there are so many other laws that are at work in our life all the time. The law of balance is so important right now in this season of fall. The law of balance keeps us from going to extremes. It helps us to let go of the dramas and to keep an even mind and to keep our emotions steady and even. The laws of thought, vibration, and attraction are also very important to understand for they remind us that we really are in charge of us. We lift our vibration with our thoughts and we attract to us according to that vibration, both physically and spiritually. Physically, we draw to us what we vibrate with, what we need to see in others, what we need to know about ourselves through others. For others are a mirror to us. And everything that happens in our life, the people that show up, have a reason to be there. We all bring a gift to each other. So pay attention to what shows up in your life. Spiritually, we draw to us the loving forces that support us. Or we close ourselves off. When we lift our vibration, when we connect to God and we open our hearts, we're lifting our vibration and we're in unity with those loving forces, those angelic beings, those guides and angels and teachers that work with us to help us. So we work in our spiritual development to always keep a high vibration, which is a loving vibration, and work to live with kindness and compassion and understanding. Take a look at your life and think about what are you drawing? What are you attracting in your life? Because when we see what shows up in our life, we can tell how well we're doing on our spiritual path. Two other laws that are so important are the laws of freedom and choice. We are always a choice. And the principle states, the door to reformation is never closed. We are always reforming ourselves. We are always making a choice as to who we want to be today. So when you wake up in the morning, think about who do you want to be? You're not stuck with who you were yesterday. You can choose to create your next highest and greatest vision of yourself every day. You're in charge of you. The two most important parts of our feast that I'm talking about today are healing and mediumship. Healing brings us that communion with God, doesn't it? We can feel that power filling us and bringing to us the life force we need to thrive on this planet. As we connect to that divine source and we feel that healing energy flowing into us and flowing through us, we have the opportunity to send that healing out into the world as we did in our meditation. You know, each and every week our healers sit on Wednesday evenings and send healing out to those who are in need. And if you are in need or you know someone who is, please send us a picture, send us an email, and our healers will be happy to work on those individuals. But we want to hear back from you. We want to communicate with you so that we know that our healing is reaching you. It's so important when we're doing healing and um, activating that healing light within ourselves that we understand that healing is coming our way. So as we do absent healing, we want the person who we're praying for and sending healing to, to know, because it helps them to open more to receiving that healing light. 
Is it necessary for them to know? No, it's not. But it works really well when we know someone is sending healing our way because we're ready to receive. So healing is a great, important part of spiritualism. And unfortunately, we're not in our physical space, so we can't do the laying on of hands. But absent healing is just as powerful. And every time we connect to God and we ignite that healing power within ourselves, we know who we are as spiritual beings. Our mediumship is also so important. The information and the evidence that we get from spirit proves to us beyond a shadow of a doubt that life continues. And when we understand that life continues, we no longer need to fear death. We don't grieve in the same way because we know that our loved ones are still around us. The wisdom our loved ones share and the messages they bring help us to live our lives in the best way possible. We don't have to make the same mistakes that our loved ones did. They come to share what they learned in their lives. And what a gift that is to all of us. We can all learn. We can all grow. And the last part of our feast I want to talk about is the soup. <clears throat> soup usually is at the beginning of the meal, but I'm going to talk about it at the end. <laughs> soup is our lives. Our lives are what we put into it. Think about it, if you're making a big pot of soup, don't you want to put in real nutritious things? Things that will make you healthy and help you to sustain yourself through the cold, stormy days of winter. Nothing like a big, wonderful pot of hearty soup. Well, that's what our lives are. And what we put into it is so important because that's what we'll get out of it. So I wonder, when you look at your life, are you putting things into your life that support you and nurture you and nourish you through the storms of life? Are you being nourished during these times by the things that you put into your life? If we fill our lives with good and healthy things, like loving thoughts, acts of kindness, forgiveness, peace and harmony, connection with the divine, then every day, we will have a healthy, happy life. But it's up to us whether we'll put it in our soup. So put in your soup what you want. Fill your life with the things that support you. Embrace the gifts of spiritualism. Let the principles, the healing, the messages support you and help you in your spiritual development. And remember, your spiritual practices your prayers, your positive attitudes, your acts of kindness, your thoughts of love, your feelings of compassion, they all go into the soup of your life. And that soup will always nourish you in good times and in bad. So enjoy the feast of life with the gifts of spiritualism. God bless you all. And now we will have a musical selection and we have Damien LeCount singing In Your Arms. Enjoy. Um, it's kind of from a parent's perspective, but also spirit. You baby blues So full of Your contagious smile And as I watch Start to grow up All I can do Is hold it tight Rains with 
Just in knowing you'll someday see the truth from lies. Damien and thank you Ron for that wonderful song and now it's time for our spirit communication and I will be a medium once again as I usually am each week because of the way we do our services and I'll bring to you the wisdom and the evidence that spirit brings and I know that they come in groups and it can be many spirits together that she has similar information so if you recognize information about your loved one Please accept them. Please welcome them into your heart because they're all trying to get through and they come in their similarities. So um, let's see who's with us today. And by the way, thank you for all the emails I got from last week's service. There were a lot of people that recognized those wonderful spirits who came through. And I really appreciate the emails. So keep sending them and let us know that you recognize these wonderful spirits as they come close. And now let's see who's with us today. Okay, uh, I feel like I have a gentleman who's stepping into my vibration and he stands very tall. I feel like he's rather slight. He's got a very good build. He's sturdy, uh, but I don't feel like he has much extra weight. I feel like he would have taken care of himself. I feel like he would have run because I feel like he's out jogging is how he's showing himself. I feel like his hair is short and close uh, close to his head and I feel like it was uh, on the dark side, darker hair as he's running. He's very fit and uh, a very, uh, he tells me he's a very smart man as well. Uh, so I feel like he would have worked in business, he would have worked in an office. Uh, not an outdoors uh, person, but more inside, and he's telling me he used his head. He's bringing me a pencil and an eraser, so I feel like he's making me feel like I'm working with figures. So I feel like he was in finance or accounting, uh, doing something with figures. Uh, I feel like he loved his family dearly, and he. I feel like he passed. Uh, he's making me feel like he's in his 40s. So I feel like he didn't uh, get to age. He didn't get to grow to an older age. He died when he was fit and when he was healthy. And I feel like it was a heart attack. It was something. Um, he's making me aware of something wrong with the valve or something in his heart that didn't work properly. And he went very quickly. 
Uh, I feel like he's apologizing to his wife for leaving her holding the bag because he's showing me with his wife who had all these things that she had to take care of and wasn't aware of so many things because I feel like he's saying, I took care of everything. I did the finances. I, I did a lot of things that she wasn't aware of. And I feel like he would have had different accounts and different um, insurance policies or different things that she knew nothing about. And she had a really hard time uh, piecing things together after his passing. It was such a shock and it was a shock to everyone. I feel like he's wanting to reach out and to connect and to say it was a shock to me too. And he jokes about that. He said it really was a shock. He wasn't expecting. He wasn't ready. He wasn't prepared. He didn't leave things in the way he would have wanted to. I feel like he's somebody that would have always taken care of things and took great care. And so leaving in that way really went against his grain. I feel like it went against his personality because he liked things to be all lined up and neat and proper. And so he's bringing an apology, but he's saying, my leaving in that way showed me that we never know. And we can't always be prepared for whatever, whatever comes along. And he's coming in to say, you can do your best to be prepared, but don't worry about it. You'll manage and you'll get through because life always brings surprises. And what we, all we can do is try to make the most of those surprises. He's saying my death was uh, not a pleasant surprise. But there are many surprises that come into our lives that uh, can be very happy and joyous if we can just get past the, our inability to be ready for those surprises. So he's saying life is throwing a lot of surprises at everyone right now. And we just have to go with the flow. And I feel like that's what he learned in life, that he would become frustrated if he couldn't uh, prepare properly for things. If he was going into a meeting, everything had to be just so, everything had to be perfect. And he said, um, sometimes we get in our own way and we don't allow that flow of life and we don't allow the good surprises to come in and bring us the joy that we really need in our day. So he's saying, let go, open up, and allow life to just flow around you. And he wants his wife to know that he's right there with her. And I feel like his wife is working on being fit and because um, I'm seeing her exercise and uh, doing a lot of movement and I'm feeling yoga. Uh, he's bringing in yoga with her. So I feel like he's watching her as she gets in, uh, keeps herself in shape. And he's very proud of her for doing that because those acts, those things that she's doing for herself to make her more healthy is a way of loving herself. And he said, I did things to make me healthy and I still died, but that's okay. Those acts of trying to do things that are for your highest good, those are ways you love yourself. So uh, it's all good. So keep up, keep working at it. Keep trying to do your best to be healthy and strong uh, because you're doing an awesome job. And I feel like he wants to reach out and give his wife a big hug and let you know that you're always loved and he's always there for you and he'll help you as much as he can from the highest side of life. So I leave you with his blessings. He's just a wonderful man and he's chatting now because he just likes being here. <laughs> so I'm begging you he can step aside now and uh, be with his wife and share that love and share that um, wonderful aspect of his soul with her, but we all thank him for coming and sharing his wisdom. God bless you, thank you. Okay. I feel like I have a, a, another a lady who's coming in and she comes in with a big smile and I feel like I can see her teeth when she smiles. So she has beautiful teeth, they glisten and shine. So I feel like that was one of her uh, things she was really proud of, the, uh, the beautiful white teeth she had. 
and um, the smile that she had. She always led with her smile. She's telling me, I feel like I, I have soft hair with her. It's neatly coiffed. I feel like she would have taken really good care of herself. And, uh, but I feel like she did her hair because she's showing me curlers. You know, the old pink curlers? <laughs> so she's dating herself. I don't know if they still have those, but she's got pink curlers in her hair that she would set her hair every night so that she would look lovely the next day. So she took good care of herself and how she presented herself to the world. But she said it was more important how I presented me to me because she liked to look in the mirror and see that she was presentable, is how she puts it. But she's very personable and very friendly and very happy as she comes in. I feel like she would have worked with people. I see her interacting with a lot of people and she's very helpful. So she was in a job where she helped people and that made her feel really good about herself inside. Uh, I feel like this job that she's talking about where she got to help people is later on in life. I feel like she had a career doing one thing and then as she neared retirement from that, she took on another job that was more in the line of helping people and something that really brought her uh, happiness and joy. And she's saying that, you know, just because we work in one field doesn't mean we have to stay stuck in that field. We can begin to think as we get older about what we really love and what we really want to do in life. So I feel like she's saying, I'm an example of that, that the job that she did, I feel like she was also in a business uh, job and in a very large office with a lot of people. And I felt like she did her job and she came home and it was so-so, it wasn't like her be all and end all. But when she finished with that job, when she could retire from that and take her pension, she said she could then begin to create a life that she loved. And she said, uh, and I did, and I worked with people and I helped people as much as I could and it made me happy. And I feel like she's coming in today to encourage people, don't wait like I did to retire because I didn't have all that many years doing what I loved. Do what you love now. Find something that really makes your heart sing. And find what makes you feel alive and do that. And you don't have to do that for your living. You can do that on the side. You can do that as a hobby but you need to allow your soul to sing. And I feel like where she was helping people, and she's, she's bringing me children right now and showing me that she would help children read. She would read stories to children. That was one of the things that she uh, got to do and she really loved it. And she says, find something that just makes you happy and do that. And do it on a regular basis so that you can always have a happy heart. And I feel like this lady has such a happy heart and she looks back at her life and I feel like she's waving to um, all the people in her life. I'm not seeing her own children. I feel like she was a aunt to many people and she had a lot of connections to a lot of people, but I don't feel like she had her own children, which is, why she really loved to be with children later on in life and to read with them. And she loved her nieces and nephews as they were growing up. She spent a lot of time, she spent holidays with them, and she loved sharing all their stories. She loved them telling her stories and she would tell them stories. And these are like her, her happy memories that she shared with her family and all the people that she loved dearly. And I feel like she's trying to tell not just her family, but all of us to do what makes your heart sing. I feel like she could have sang as well because she keeps bringing me that singing. And allow yourself to be happy in life. Don't put it off. Just do it. <laughs> and I leave you with her blessings and lots and lots of love. And I feel like I have a uh, younger woman coming in here today. I feel like she's um, got long dark hair. I feel like she's making me feel like she's in her 30s, uh, but not too old. I feel like she passed young. 
and I feel like she passed in an accident because uh, she's showing me a car and I feel a car crash with her. But she has dark hair and she's very beautiful and I do feel like she had, uh, she was married and she had uh, two children because I see a, a daughter and a son and I feel like the daughter was older than the, than the son and I feel her feeling very uh, sorry and sad that she had left them so young because I feel like they were both very young when she passed. And I feel like she wants to come in and just let them know that she's been around them all this time. So I feel like there's, it's been a number, a lot of years since she passed because she's given me the idea that her son and daughter are grown now and I feel like she's trying to reach out to them and let them know how proud she is of them. I feel like her mother is still here and she's reaching out to her mother as well because I feel like her mother was a big part of raising her children and she's sending so much gratitude to her and so much love and I feel like she really wants them to know that she has been aware uh, all their lives of what was going on with them and has tried to help them as much as possible from the highest side of life. I feel like she's very proud of her children. She's saying, keep working at it. Uh, I feel like each one has made something of themselves and I feel like they need support. They need encouragement now to keep going. So for some reason, I feel like there's something uh, in the way of um, moving forward. And I feel like she's behind them like a, uh, she's got like a push cart. And she's running behind them, trying to push them forward and to let them know that they're not alone, that all they have to do is take that one step and then the next step, that uh, they, as long as they stay on the path, they'll be fine. Just keep moving forward, stay focused on what it is you want. And I feel like I want to give her, give you lots of gratitude and love and lots of peace that she's bringing in around all of you because I feel like she wasn't really at peace in her life. Um, she was, um, tells me she had a, a real nervous energy and there's like an anxiety presence in her and she's saying I'm trying to bring peace and light to all of you so that you can move through life in a much gentler and easier way than I did. She said I often got in my way and she's trying to pave the way with all of this blue light which is peace and she's trying to place peace before you and behind you and letting you all know that she's there with you. And I leave you with her blessings and lots and lots of love. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Okay, I feel like I have a um, gentleman and a lady who are coming in, it's a couple, and I feel like the woman is the one stepping forward and I feel like I have a lot of difficulty breathing with her. She's very short of breath before she passed. And I feel like she would have had a lung disorder uh, that she struggled with for many, many years. I feel like at the end of her life, she couldn't really take care of herself. I feel like she lived with her daughter because she's, it's either her daughter or daughter-in-law, but I feel like she's living in the home with her, uh, her daughter and the kids and I feel like she may have had a bedroom in their living room when she was sick because I feel like they were all took care of her and helped her uh, and I feel like she felt um, she ne she felt like a burden she was so worried she was a burden on uh, the family but she says you ha you helped me so much that you erased that feeling and I knew that you loved me and I was so appreciative of all that you did for me that I worried that I was a burden but you made me feel like I wasn't 
And that is one of the greatest gifts you could have ever given me because it is so hard when you move through life as a strong, energetic person. And I felt like in her life, she was very strong and very capable and could handle things and took care of things. And when she got sick and when she wasn't able to perform the functions of even caring for herself, that was devastating to her. That was so hard for her because she was so independent and, and liked to take care of herself to allow anyone to take care of her. And she says, I'm sorry that you had to take care of me the way you did, but it taught me something so wonderful that love always finds a way. And your love is what carried me across the threshold. Your love is what made the ending of my life so beautiful. And some may think my ending wasn't beautiful, but it certainly was because I was loved. And never, ever think that I didn't realize what a sacrifice you made. I feel very emotional with this lady. She's bringing so much love through to her family and the people that cared for her. And she said, I am so very grateful. And I want everyone to know that if you have an elderly person that you love, be patient. The time is short. Give them the time and help them as much as you can because it's your love that carry us across. And the gratitude that we have for you is beyond anything you can ever imagine. So I'm going to leave you with her love and blessings and so much love, so much gratitude that it's overwhelming. And she's trying to give encouragement to the people that are struggling trying to take care of elderly parents. Just be there for them and let them know you love them. And I leave you with her blessings and lots and lots of love. And we thank all of the loved ones from the spirit side of life who have come in today to share their love, to share their wisdom, to help us move along our pathway. I hope that we all learn from their wisdom and the things that they have shared today. And I hope we have all felt the love and the peace and the gratitude that they have been bringing to us. So even though we're not in the physical space together, know that your loved ones are there with you. And please open your heart and take that love in. And send your love to them. Let them know what you're thinking and feeling and doing. Because they love to be a part of your life. Enjoy them. Love them. And, and full, with a heart filled with gratitude, I thank all of you for sharing your loved ones with me. And I thank all of those in the spirit side of life who have drawn near today to help us. And now we have just a few announcements before we close our service uh, to make sure to visit our website and donate to the church. We don't have a basket to pass, but we really do need your donations to keep the church uh, glow, growing and flowing, and we want that church to be there when this uh, COVID thing is over. And also, you can donate on the Facebook now. We have our donate button, so notice that when you see the see our notices in Facebook, and you can donate right there. Uh, also, if you're on the website, sign up for our emails. If you haven't gotten them, make sure to get on that uh, contact us page on our website and sign up so that you'll be on our email list. Um, Medium's night is tomorrow night. That's Monday, September 28th from 7 to 9. I'm not sure there'll be any openings, but if you're still wanting a reading, you can send me an email and I'll let you know. It's been filling up very quickly, so uh, there may be one or two openings left. But the next one will be on October 26th. So you can also start booking that now as well. A uh, reminder to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And Dominic Bogue will be our speaker next week. And he will also be doing a gallery night on Friday, October 16th at 7 p.m. on Zoom. The tickets are on sale on our website for $35 as a fundraiser for our church. But if you... 
uh, book early. If you want to purchase a ticket before October 10th, you can do so through our contact page on the donation button and you can get a ticket for $25. So you save $10 if you sign up but on the contact page through the donation button and just make a note of your email so that we can send you the link. Um, so a lot's going on. Our classes have started. If you need any information about the church at all, please feel free to send me an email. But check our website, a lot of information on there. So thank you for joining us and let us close our service with the closing prayer. Infinite Spirit, beloved God, we give thanks for your presence within us and around us today and always. Help us to walk our spiritual path. Help us to create a wonderful spiritual practice that will help us always stay connected to you. Help us to bring your healing light into our hearts, our minds, our bodies, and send it out into our world so that we can make a difference. Thank you for the angels, the guides, the teachers that are around us. And thank you for helping us truly understand that life and love does continue. We are all eternal beings, a part of you. Amen. Thank you for joining us this week. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next week.